This guy was a huge Richard. If you get it, leave a comment and tell the people who don't. Okay, that boy. I'm your host Yusuf, and these are 10 chilling things you didn't know about Richard Ramirez. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Anyways, let's chop it up, chop it up. Number 10. Richard Ramirez was born on February 29th, 1960 in El Paso, Texas. His parents were Julian Ramirez, who was a former police officer, and Mercedes Ramirez, who was the youngest of five children and grew up in a home that was often characterized by violence and dysfunction. Ramirez's father was a physically abusive man who regularly beat his children, and this had a profound impact on Ramirez's development. He was also exposed to his cousin, Miguel Ramirez, who was a former Green Beret and had committed acts of violence in Vietnam. This, along with the violence he experienced in his own home, is believed to have contributed to Ramirez's violent tendencies. Despite his troubled childhood, Ramirez was described as a shy and quiet kid who showed little interest in school. He struggled with substance abuse and was arrested several times for minor crimes before he began his ending spree in 1984, but we'll talk about that later. Number 9. Ramirez's ending spree began in the summer of 1984 and lasted until his capture in August 1985. During this time, he committed a series of brutal slaughters, assaults, and burglaries that terrorized Southern California. His victims were of different ages, races, and genders, and he chose them at random. Ramirez was known for his method of breaking into homes through windows or unlocked doors, and he would often steal items from his victims. He also left behind satanic symbols and messages at many of the crime scenes, which led to speculation about his motivations and beliefs. Some believed that he was a Satanist, while others thought he was simply trying to confuse law enforcement. Despite the intense manhunt for Ramirez, he was able to evade capture for over a year. This changed in August 1985, when he was finally caught by citizens who recognized him from news reports and held him until the police arrived. He was later convicted of 13 counts of slaughter and other crimes, and he was sentenced to demise. Ramirez never showed any remorse for his crimes and often smiled during his trial, which made him even more frightening and enigmatic to the public. He became a cult figure for some, and he received fan mail from women who were attracted to him. Despite his notoriety, many questions about his motivations and actions remain unanswered to this day. Do you admit to being evil, Richard? We are all evil in some form or another. Number 8. Richard Ramirez was known to have a history of substance abuse, and this is believed to have contributed to his violent behavior. He used a variety of substances, including powder, green, and wild juice, and it's possible that these substances may have played a role in his ending spree. I can't say any drug names, so... Substance use can have a number of effects on an individual's behavior and mental state, including increased aggression and impulsiveness. It's also possible that Ramirez's substance use may have exacerbated any underlying mental health issues such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, which have been suggested as possible explanations for his violent behavior. While the exact role of substance use in Ramirez's crimes is difficult to determine, it's clear that his substance use was a significant part of his life, and may have contributed to his criminal behavior. Nevertheless, it's important to note that substance use alone does not explain the brutal and senseless natures of his crimes, and that other factors such as his upbringing and personal history likely also play a role. In the summer of 1985, the Texas drifter descended like a deadly disease on a hot California night. A one-man epidemic of madness and one of America's first serial killers to be given a brand name, the name the Night Stalker. Number 7. Ramirez was arrested multiple times for minor crimes before he began his ending spree in 1984. These arrests are believed to have contributed to his criminal behavior. Ramirez had a troubled youth, and he was known to be involved in criminal activities from a young age. He was first arrested in 1977 for substance possession, and later for other minor crimes, such as theft and burglary. These early arrests may have contributed to his sense of impunity and his belief that he could get away with criminal behavior. It's also possible that Ramirez's experiences in the criminal justice system may have contributed to his later violence. For example, he may have developed a hatred for authority figures such as police officers, or he may have felt that he had nothing to lose after having already been in trouble with the law. Despite these earlier arrests, Ramirez was able to avoid significant legal consequences for his crimes, and he continued to engage in criminal behavior. He preyed on both women and men, young and old, he slipped through windows, slit throats, tortured and Number 6. Ramirez was known for his distinct appearance which included long, wild hair and dark sunglasses. He became one of the most recognizable criminals in the country. 
Richard Ramirez's distinct appearance was one of the most notable aspects of his identity and contributed to his notoriety as the Night Stalker. His long hair and dark sunglasses gave him a sinister and enigmatic appearance. Ramirez's appearance also made him easier to recognize, and this is likely one of the reasons why he was eventually caught by citizens who recognized him from news reports. Despite his notoriety, however, he was able to avoid capture for over a year as he traveled from Los Angeles to San Francisco, committing numerous crimes along the way. Ramirez's appearance has become part of his criminal legacy, and he remains one of the most recognizable serial enders in American history. To this day, he continues to be a subject of fascination for many people, who are intrigued by the motivations and actions of notorious criminals like him. I think most humans have in them the capacity to, to commit. Uh, it is no, not because... No, we don't, Richard. Uh, they, they choose not to, not because they are morally superior, as they so commonly claim, but because they are imprisoned in a web of responsibilities, commitments, no, beliefs, and sentiments, Richard, Richard. and that would render an absurd gamble or ridiculous well, self-destruction. Number 5. Richard Ramirez, known as the Night Stalker, was known for his method of entering homes through windows or unlocked doors. He would often sneak into the homes while the residents were sleeping, and he would terrorize his victims with violence and theft. In many cases, he would steal items such as cash, jewelry, and other valuables, as well as vehicles and firearms. One of the most disturbing aspects of Ramirez's crimes was his use of satanic symbols and messages. He was known to leave behind pentagrams and other satanic imagery at many of the crime scenes, which added to the terror and mystique of the Night Stalker. The satanic aspect of the crimes led to speculation that he was involved in devil worship or other satanic practices, and this added to the public's fascination with his crimes. Ramirez's use of satanic symbols has also led to speculation that he was influenced by the ideology of the Church of Satan, which was popular in the 1980s. Nevertheless, his exact motivations for using these symbols remain unclear, and it's possible that he used them simply to shock and intimidate his victims and the public. Regardless of his motivations, the Night Stalker's crimes remain some of the most shocking and violent in American history, and his use of satanic symbols and messages has added to his notoriety and legacy as one of the most feared serial enders in recent memory. Number 4. Before physical evidence tied Ramirez to 14 slaughters, he was identified by a composite sketch that detailed his badly rotting teeth. His surviving victims claimed the ender had rotten, gapped, and stained teeth. According to forensic dentists, Ramirez was missing nine teeth from both his lower and upper gums. Ramirez had his father testify that he was in El Paso, Texas at the time of the slaughters. However, his dental records placed him clearly in Los Angeles. Whilst on Demise Row, Ramirez had his teeth fixed, which he appeared delighted with as he flashed his new creepy smile at the jurors in the courtroom. 13-year-old James Romero, who assisted the police in creating the composite sketch of the Ender, said, I feel like justice was never served. He was given the demise penalty, and then he stayed there all those years. They ended up fixing his teeth, spending a bunch of money on it. He got taken care of and lived out his happy life until he passed. What a waste of taxpayers' money. Couldn't agree more. If you're right to be present while the verdicts are read here in open court. Yes. The judge granted the request and over the intercom to his holding cell, Richard Ramirez heard the verdicts. Thirteen Guilty of Eleven sex crimes. Guilty of burglary of the residence and dwelling house. Nineteen additional felonies. Guilty. Guilty on all counts. Number three, Ramirez got comfortable at his crime scenes. Some of Richard Ramirez's victims suffered greatly. Several slaughters were truly bloody affairs. He had a pattern. He ended the man in the house and intimately assaulted the woman. And he always made sure he could see the fear in his victim's eyes. In the early days of his crimes, he knocked on the car hood of Maria Hernandez so she would see him before the attack. And he yanked Sai Leon, Veronica Yu, out of her car as opposed to shooting her through the window. In Whittier, he cut out Maxine Zazara's eyes and took them with him. In another of his attacks, Patty Higgins was slashed and stabbed in the throat. Another victim, Florence Nettie Lang, who was 81, was beaten to demise with a hammer. Investigators referred to him as an enraged ender because of how viciously his victims were ended. But in several instances, Ramirez didn't just end and leave. He stuck around and made himself comfortable in the homes of his victims. When he continued his ending spree in the Bay Area, San Francisco police said that he ended an accountant named Peter Pan and abused his wife, Barbara. Ramirez then ate everything in the fridge, threw up on the kitchen floor, enjoyed himself on the living room floor, and then wrote a satanic symbol on the wall. Number two, he misunderstood lyrics from ACDC. 
On March 17, 1985, Ramirez hid in the garage of 22-year-old Maria Hernandez at her home in Rosemead, California. He shot at her head with a 22 caliber handgun, but luckily she protected her face and the bullet ricocheted off her car keys in her hands. That is crazy luck. Her roommate, 34-year-old Dale Yoshi Akazaki, then hid in the kitchen behind a counter. But when she raised her head, Ramirez shot and ended her. Left behind at the brutal slaughter scene was an ACDC hat belonging to Ramirez. Images of the hat were released to the public, and this initiated a media frenzy connecting the twisted serial ender to the rock band. It was believed that Ramirez misunderstood the lyrics to a track featured on the band's Highway to Hell album, released five years before the endings began. The band's co-founder, Malcolm Young, explained, that song is not called the Night Stalker, it's called the Night Prowler, and it's about things you used to do when you were a kid, like sneaking into a girlfriend's bedroom when her parents were asleep. The lyrics are, was that a noise out your window or a shadow on your blind, and you lie there naked like a body in a tomb, suspended animation as I slip into your room. Lead singer Brian Johnson also added, it just sickens you, you know, it sickens you to have anything to do with that kind of thing. You get it, your inspiration from something. In the case of that song, it's been completely taken out of context. The story come from, mainly there was a guy that used to steal underwear off people's laundry lines. And that inspired, well, it wasn't Brian that wrote the list, it was a guy, Bon Scott, since dead. That inspired him to go out and write a song about that. That's what Night Prowler's about. That's what Night Prowler is about. Number one, behind bars, Ramirez was inundated with hundreds of letters each month from female admirers. Freelance journalist Doreen Leoy particularly caught his attention, and she began to make regular visits to Demise Row. Leoy had fallen for Ramirez when she watched a newsfeed of his arrest and saw a certain vulnerability in the cold-blooded ender. She believed he was innocent and battled to clear his name of any wrongdoing. On October 3rd, 1996, Ramirez and Leoy were wed at San Quentin Prison, where witnesses included Ramirez's siblings and around 60 inmates. When asked about how she felt about marrying a man, Leoy replied, I can't help the way the world looks at him. They don't know him the way I do. Leoy eventually began distancing herself from Ramirez around 2010, when her efforts to clear his name were getting nowhere, considering the staggering amount of physical evidence against her husband. Then on June 13th, 2013, Ramirez passed of liver failure at age 53. He's still considered one of the most twisted enders of all time. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and comment if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on Crime Time.